But now in this video, we're going to go over the basics of uh, resistors right here. I have quarter watt resistors right here lined up. These are the values, but not in the same order on the board right now. But in uh, any case, I already did some of the math. The resistors, they mostly limit current. And so I wrote with the uh, certain voltages across these particular resistors how much current we will get. And also, I wrote how hot they will get at different voltages. They can dissipate a quarter watt of power. And so when it comes to current, the current in amps right there, I stands for current, that's a capital I, is voltage divided by resistance. So that's the voltage across the resistor divided by its resistance in ohms. I wrote the values there. Once we got the uh, current, we can calculate the power. So the power is the voltage across the resistor, or any other component for that matter, times the current flowing through it in amps. Remember the current is always in amps when you're doing the mathematical formula like this. These are quarter watt resistors, so that's 0 0.25 watts, but you still want to keep it an eighth of a watt or less. So 0 0.125 watts should be your goal, but you can go above an eighth of a watt for periods of time, but never exceed a fourth of a watt. Try to keep it above an eighth of a watt as short as possible. So now, it's really important to understand that resistors get hot. You gotta pay attention to their wattage rating. If you're building from a schematic, then hopefully the designer did a good job. Usually they design them for quarter watt resistors, if you need one watt or something, it'll probably say one watt next to it instead of no wattage. So if there's no wattage on there, quarter watt's probably good. It's still good to uh, make sure that you know for sure. That's bouncing around because it doesn't really seem to like being at one volt. But this is the total current going through these components. And like I said, generally, a quarter watts the main value I also have one watt resistors I also have 10 watt resistors right there the uh, cement ones when you want a lot of uh, current at uh, a fairly low voltage so in any case what we're gonna do is we got one volt across them right now so there's the current that's a one kilo ohm right there a hundred ohm and 220 ohm and so that's the current we're getting, that's in milliamps, so that's thousandths of an amp. And I got my FLIR camera, so you can see here that uh, they're really not all that warm. Let's see if I can get, I've been touching this uh, screwdriver, so you can see it's pretty warm compared to them. I can also put my finger by them, right there. You can see they're, they're not very warm at all with uh, one volt across them. I'm going to jump up to three because I did the math, and... That's the total current of them all. I did the math. 3 volts across a 100 ohm resistor. So these two right there. Results in 30 milliamps. And you're getting uh, close to uh, 0.1 watts. And uh, so like I said before, we want to keep this below 0.125 watts. And so we are still below there. And there you can see already the resistor is quite warm compared to the other ones. And so it's relative. It's uh, a bit warmer than my finger there too. But I, it's not terribly hot, which makes sense because of the wattage rating right there. So this is really about the most voltage we want across the uh, quarter watt resistor for it to dissipate. Whereas the uh, one watt resistor, we can get up to about half of a watt and still be safe. So now, since we already started focusing on the 100 ohm more than the other ones, let's continue with that one. So there is the resistor schematic symbol. If you see that schematic symbol in a schematic diagram, you grab the value that you see on top right there. And uh, if you're not designing it yourself, otherwise you got to come up with the value by looking at these two properties again. So 100 ohms. if you want to go by the color code. Let's look at that really quick. So, brown is one, black is zero. That's the only two colors for the 100 ohm resistor and the 1000 ohm 
it has a tolerance rating of 1%, which means if it's a 100 ohm resistor, you can expect maybe it'll be 99, maybe it'll be 101. So these blue resistors tend to be 1%. There's beige resistors, they only have four stripes, but the color code system works the same, they just have one less stripe. The beige ones have a gold stripe, they can be 5% higher or lower than the rated value. I buy cheap resistors, so I'm pretty sure some of them are falling out of the range, plus they're resistors I used before, so maybe I damaged them, you know, maybe I overheated them or something. But in case we got brown, I don't know how well it'll show up on camera, but brown, black, 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 and then brown right there. I think that one's spaced a little bit farther, that uh, bottom one. But in any case, color code is the same each way. Brown on the end and then three black stripes in between. One kilo ohm though, we have a brown stripe right there. And so that stands for one. And so that's one more zero. So when it comes to the color code, these are the digits. So one, zero, zero. Same with that one. First three digits are zeros, and then we run out of stripes. So this is the multiplier. So black means times one. That's how you'll probably see other people's charts. I don't usually draw my charts with the times. I usually say one zero or no zeros. So zero zeros. That's what that zero stands for. No more zeros added to this number. There's also silver and gold, which are less than 100. They take away or they move the decimal point but uh, we're not going to worry about that right now for the uh, standard colors it's just the number of zeros so red is two that would be two more zeros and uh, so in any case I'm not going to go into the color code too much but uh, that's pretty much it so once you're using a hundred ohm resistor just pay attention to the color code and you know put it back in the package with the resistors with that same color pretty straightforward usually on the paper it is written the value right there so in any case, let's get to it. I only have the 10 ohm resistor on the board right now, on the power rail. So there's alligator clips coming from the power supply. I just clipped them to jumpers and then I got jumpers coming across there. So I do this all the time in my videos with this power supply right here. So what's the mathematical property? First thing you notice with a 100 ohm resistor, 1 volt, 10 milliamps. 2 volts, 20 milliamps. 3 volts, 30 milliamps. Really straightforward. The problem is, we got to 3 volts. We're already uh, really close to the most wattage we want to use for long periods of time. The uh, 0 0.125. So, we will uh, actually, I got the voltage a little too high. So there you go. We got uh, 1 volt right now. You can see 10 milliamps, although it doesn't like the one volt, and so it's wavering. When I get it to two, you're gonna see it's steady. So two volts, that's 20 milliamps, which is the same as 0 0.02 amps. That's how you do the mathematical formula. If you do the uh, Ohm's law, which I wrote over here, the current is right here, 0 0.02. So you will get, uh, a fraction of an amp, not milliamps from the current. You just got to convert it to milliamps later. When you're doing power, you'll need this number right there. So we got 0 0.02 and we got 2 volts across it. So 2 times 2 is 4 and you can see it's 2 decimal points over, just like that. You do the math there. So we're not going to go over that too much. All kinds of people do that. The main takeaway is you notice we doubled the voltage we had four times the wattage. We went from two volts to three volts so one volt difference we got so about uh, 1.5 times we got more than two times the wattage to deal with. So wattage goes up quickly so we're gonna cut off at three volts on there whereas with the one, uh, one kilo ohm 1000 ohm resistor we can go up to 10 volts. So that's the first takeaway. Be very careful about raising voltage, especially with these lower value resistors. So now before we move along, I want to quickly point something out. At uh, the one volt for the power supply, the display gets chaotic. It's not really chaotic with what's going on at the board. So you just can't trust the display. So I have this set to the amp range, 10 amps or less amp, so that we get the same number display on there and 
you'll notice that we got, once we get a connection, a steady 9 milliamps of current. So 0 0.009 amps right there. Of course, for more accuracy. So that was steady. So it's just the display going haywire. We'll zoom in a little closer. We'll go to a milliamps and then move this over to this particular multimeter. Everything measures right there except for the amperage. So we got milliamps and it goes to a couple decimal points right there. So let's look. And they can see slightly less than 9 milliamps running pretty smoothly. And we can quickly go when you get to a higher voltage. It didn't go up. There we go. Now it smooths out for some reason. So it's just the display for whatever reason at uh, about one volt. It goes kind of chaotic. So now we're kind of at our max right now. You can see it's about 27 milliamps of current. So now we come to the one kilo ohm and to show the current I'm going to use the multimeter. It's more accurate and it doesn't waver at one volt. But in uh, any case you can see here that we have the electrical property of for each volt there's one milliamp of current. So each volt one the milliamp is one thousandth of an amp. And so thousand ohm resistor thousandths of an amp per volt. So 5 volts, 5 milliamps, 10 volts, 10 milliamps. So we'll look at that really quick. And so we're going to use that meter, as I said before. Right now there's 1 volt. Of course the display is going haywire. And I'm going to go to milliamps right there instead of amps. So when you do the formula, make sure you do it in amps. But then you can convert it to milliamps. So right there we got uh, pretty much spot on one milliamp of current and if that wasn't so wavery and if it was more accurate then it would say one so let's go up to five so again this is not as accurate as the multimeter but it's going to be really close to five milliamps so there you can see pretty much spot on five milliamps for the meter there and then it's just shy right over there another thing is we lose a little bit of voltage once we finally get to the rail because of these connection points and whatnot. So maybe we'll uh, go up a tenth of a volt and uh, then we will get slightly above the five milliamps if that looks better right there. So we lose a little voltage along the way. We can just add a little more voltage on here. And now we're gonna go to our maximum wattage because I did the math. I'll look at it again, but 10 milliamps of current. And uh, I'll zoom in so we can see the multimeter a little bit better but there we go 10 milliamps so pretty straightforward whatever the voltage is that will be the current in milliamps so there you can see milliamps but you got to do the uh, math in amps so 10 milliamps right there and that's what I like about the uh, 1 kilo ohm that's why I was going to start with that but we kind of started talking about the uh, 10 ohm so when it comes to wattage 10 volts times 0 0.01 is 0 0.1 watts. That's why I stopped there. We're getting up to about its maximum wattage rating or uh, recommended wattage rating, but still it's uh, it's pretty good to go at uh, 10 volts. So the 100 ohm resistor we had to stop at 3 volts, but we had a lot more current. Whereas the 1000 ohms we have a higher voltage, but we have to limit the current more. So now, 220 ohm resistor, you see me use this with 5 volts a lot. And here you can see why. 5 volts across the resistor, we get 22.7 milliamps. That was probably rounded off. And then we will get about 0.114 watts, which is slightly below the 0.12 watt recommended. So we can go up to 0.25. So we're still plenty clear there with 5 volts directly across the resistor. So usually I have an LED in series with it and so that's above the 20 milliamps recommended for an LED but the LED actually blocks probably about 2 volts so only 3 volts will go across the resistor. The voltage gets split up among components and LEDs are pretty easy they block a certain amount of voltage forward bias probably 2 volts maybe 3 volts uh, depending on the color and uh, then the rest of the voltage goes across the resistor. So we're plenty safe, 5 volts with the 220 ohm resistor. 
470 ohm resistor, same thing. I used to work with 9 volts, mostly. I had 9 volt batteries, alkaline batteries. The LED blocked about 2 volts, leaving about 7 volts across the resistor, and we had about 15 milliamps of current in those videos. And uh, so that's why I wrote the 7 there. And also because that's getting pretty close to the uh, recommended wattage rating of 0.125 and below. But uh, again, lower voltage is plenty fine. You just have less current. And uh, so, I didn't really talk about the other components blocking the voltage too much, but just be aware of that. Not all of the power supply voltage will go across the resistor. So, that's topics when you learn about those other components, how the voltage is going to go across the resistor. Just be aware uh, the current is going to be the voltage across the resistor and its resistance at all times. That comes up constantly in electronics, which is why you hear of Ohm's law a lot, and you also hear of uh, power. So components will give you either a current limit, like LEDs, 20 milliamps, or a power limit, like resistors. And then sometimes you get both. And uh, so you got to be aware of both. Don't exceed one or the other. And try to stay about halfway of the uh, maximum value. But uh, in any case, this went on a lot longer than I expected, so thanks for sticking around this long, and uh, hope it helped you a lot. Check out one of these other videos, and also subscribe. Click the bell. I will see you in the next video.